Hey, good afternoon, guys. Welcome to the Bendix booth. My name is David Schramm. I'm the marketing manager for compressors. And so today we'd like to talk to you a little bit about the compressors, uh, some simple maintenance things, some things to keep an eye out for, uh, so you're not wasting a lot of your money. Here at compressors, we like to think of it as kind of the heart of your air charging system, right? You've got the compressor and your governor, and you're filling your tanks. And a lot of times when you have troubles with the air charging system, it gets blamed on the compressors. And really, the compressor is not the root cause. It's more of a symptom. So there's a couple things we're going to go over with you guys to make sure you're not wasting money just swapping out and replacing uh, compressors needlessly. So what we're going to talk about today is what I like to call the three L's when you, when you have an issue with compressors, uh, or I should say the air charging system, and that's leaks, lines, and unloaders. So uh, let's say you're a truck driver or you're used to about how long it should take when you fire that thing up in the morning when you hear the tanks are full and you hear that first air purge. And maybe over time you notice it's taking longer and longer, like, hey, maybe I have an issue with my charging system. And so you want to take a look. Well, the first thing you're going to want to do, uh, and, and really not much better than the old soapy rag, is you're going to want to go over the compressor head and the fittings and so forth where all the connections are, just again, just to make sure there's no air leak coming out there. Nothing obvious like uh, coolant or oil or anything like that. And again, all the, all the lines you want to check, um, when you're done with the head, now obviously this is a very beat up line, but the next thing you're going to want to check after the head of the compressor is you're going to take your rag and go across a line such as this braided hose. Now, for one, you want to use a rag just in case it's tore up on the backside, but again, you want to get water all over this hose because the way this hose goes bad, it might be a lot of little leaks in here that you wouldn't really notice, and you need something like that to check. Uh, a lot of times these lines... If you don't see anything on the outside, you're going to want to disconnect it from the compressor and take a look inside the line. I know we can zoom in on this, but what I'm trying to show is there's a lot of coke and built-up oil inside this, and what's going to happen is you're going to restrict it. And when you restrict it, the compressor is going to run hotter, it's going to run harder, it's going to put a lot more wear and tear on the compressor, and something like that you might not really see if you're just looking at the outside. So again, you're going to want to look at the inside to make sure that line's not restricted. If you've taken a look at the inside of the line, there's nothing on the outside, everything looks okay, the next thing you're going to want to look at is the unloader. Now, the unloader is located in this particular compressor or a lot of our compressors. You're just going to want to remove this cap, and this happens to be a twin cylinder, so you would take both caps off, and then you would have, this is what the unloader valve itself looks like. Now, when you're looking at the unloader valve to make sure it's functioning properly, you're going to be looking at these O-rings or they may have bushings, but whatever that material is, you want to make sure it's not flat, it's not cracked, there's not wear spots in it, to make sure you're getting a good seal. Because again, if you don't have that good seal in here, you're going to leak. The last thing you want to check on the ESS piston is this bottom seat. This is where it actually makes contact inside the head. And again, if you can't make a good seat here, you're going to leak, and that's going to be an issue as well. And as I say, a lot of times when you have an issue with the compressor, it's not really with the compressor, it's something else. But you want to eliminate the compressor, right, before you go any further. And so these are the things you're going to have to want to check with it. Um, let's say you've gone through those pieces. You've gone through all this stuff and say, you know, I, I really don't have a problem with, with what I'm looking at. But you always want to check, especially if you get down to the ESS piston level. I have this diagram showing that the ESS piston, the governor, and the purge valve they're kind of interrelated. They all work together in conjunction. So if you have an issue with one of them, you're going to want to check the function of the other two. Uh, a governor, for instance. Let's say, oh, I, I think my governor's leaking. Well, and a lot of times, a lot of guys replace those. They're very inexpensive. They're easy to get to. So a guy will, will switch out a governor right away. But you should also check the other two pieces to make sure they're functioning. A lot of times with the air valve, you'll get that machine gunning or the rapid cycling where the purge valve on the bottom is an issue, and so those are, again, quick and easy to replace, and you replace that, but you also want to check to make sure the other pieces are functioning as they should. Let's say you've gone through all those pieces, and your compressor, hey, it looks good, I don't see any issues with that, but, you know, it just seems to be running a lot, or I seem to be going through a compressor every six months, it just doesn't seem to be holding up. The next thing you want to make sure of, it's the right size compressor. Uh, let's face it, a lot of times when the manufacturers build the truck and they put the compressor on the engine, they're looking for the most cost-effective way to do it. And they might not take into consideration what your vocation is or what some of the av other applications on your vehicle are, so the compressor might actually be undersized for your particular use. And so what we've developed at Bendix is this application guide 
It's very simple. It basically walks you through what sort of vehicle you have, what are some of the extra equipment, lift axles, uh, if you've got kneelers on it, or anything you might have. That and then we just assign it a value and at the end tally it up and say, you know, you need a lot more air than you think you need. So at the bottom we say we recommend this compressor or that compressor. Again, just to make sure that you're getting the right piece in there and you're not overworking it. If you have a compressor that's too small and you're overworking it, you're going to wind up burning these things up and going through them uh, at a lot faster than you're going to want to, trust me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's really it for the compressor part that I wanted to talk about with that. Uh, a couple other things that I wanted to get into was um, when we talk about this application guideline, and we're talking about the right size compressor. Well, another thing to keep in mind, a lot of you guys who you know have your own rigs or are buying aftermarket, pieces, parts, you want to make sure you get a genuine Bendix product. A lot of times, just because it's blue, you know, in the old days you thought, oh, it must be a genuine Bendix because it's painted blue. Well, that's not really the case anymore. A lot of times, just because it's blue doesn't mean it's Bendix. So when you buy something that you believe is genuine Bendix to put on your vehicle, you want to make sure that the label's correct on the box and also the tag that's on the side of the compressor that says genuine Bendix. Again, we just want to make sure you're getting what you pay for, right? And that's, that's really what, what matters. Uh, that being said, though, we've had a lot of our customers come up to us and ask us to supply them competitive reman compressors. And so we started an all-mix program several years ago with the compressors we don't normally supply, but that we can make available to them. So it's not, again, not a genuine Bendix product, but we like to make all these other all-mix compressors available. So a customer of ours, if he needs a genuine Bendix, we can take care of it. If you happen to have a Cummins or a Midland piece, we can give you a reman for that. And a lot of it is because it makes it easier for the customer to come to just one place. But a lot of people are really very comfortable and they feel very secure with the Bendix Blue team, with our quality, our warranty service, all the things that go into it. So again, it's just something else out there that we're trying to spread ourselves out and make ourselves more, uh, more of a shopper friendly, if you will. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is two new exciting compressors that we have. Uh, typically, a compressor is designed for a specific engine. And because of that, there's a lot of applications out there that we really can't help a lot of people in. So we've decided to come up with a couple different variants. And this one, obviously plastic that I've been playing with all uh, morning here. Uh, this is our SAB, SA, I'm sorry, 922 SAB and C flange front end. Now this is a very standard front end that's on a lot of PTOs for engines and transmissions. But really this is for an application and it can go anywhere from mining to agriculture and it's kind of outside our normal trucking genre, if you will. But the idea is there's a lot of applications that need compressed air, and we can use this compressor and a lot of those other applications where we were never able to really do anything before. So this is one path we've taken. And another path we've taken, this is brand new for us, this compressor actually utilizes a Volvo Mac front end. Now, historically, you know, in the past 10 years, we have not supplied OE to Volvo, but a lot of our customers have come to us, they've got a fleet, and they say, hey, you know, I've got these Navistars and these Detroit diesels you guys take care of, but I got this Volvo Mac, and I'm really having some issues with it, and we never had an answer for them. Well, so now what we've done is we've redesigned, basically this is our normal compressor, tried and true, been running well, you know, great success with, and we've just put on the front end to make sure it fits for a Volvo. So again, that gives us another opportunity to help the people out there if they have issues with a non-Bendix compressor, Sometimes, you know, we're trying to get some solutions for them as well. And again, really, that's all I wanted to tell you guys. I thank you for taking the time out of your show. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. If you want to stick around, I'd be happy to answer any compressor-specific questions on service, replacement pieces, anything you need. But other than that, uh, thank you and enjoy the show.